was wondering when somebody was going to talk. <laughs> or We're move. The Pete Holmes game. <laughs> the opposite of the Pete Holmes game. <laughs> uh, so we just saw uh, uh, a we movie. We just got out of Age of Adeline. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It was um, so good. It really, yeah. You punched the robot and they all in space. It's radically different from the trailer. <laughs> Very, yeah, yeah. It sneaks no. up on you. <laughs> we, we just saw Age of Ultron. <laughs> Surprise! Yeah. I bet you we didn't know. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> giant words up up here. Yeah, no, there could have been like a Bible movie that came out this weekend. <laughs> also titled Avengers 2 <laughs> Age of Ultron. Turns out Ultron's the devil. <laughs> I mean, Ultron did make an, uh, a, a couple Bible references. Yeah. 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 This is the best Christian movie of the year. <laughs> Hands down. Way, way better Jesus movie than Man of Steel was. I beat up little boy by this much. <laughs> Just this much. <laughs> it's only slightly better than little boy. <laughs> this movie was... Uh, yeah, the the people in the comments for little boy that said that uh, Brad and I should be uh, cautious about how much we would enjoy this. Uh, you're wrong. That was fucking awesome. I hated it. No, I like <laughs> right it. Right on. <laughs> <laughs> Teach their own. Whatever. No, I enjoy it. You heard it here it. first. Brad hates it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Was it perfect? No. Was it a really good time? Oh, God, yes. Yeah, I mean, it, I'm sure that there's stuff in this that people will find a bitch about. Oh, there, yeah. There always is. Multiple times I made this face, and that for me means it was a good movie. <laughs> for me, that could mean a couple of different things. <laughs> that could mean, this is really good, or, oh my god, this has a sudden Hiroshima dream sequence. Oh, that, was... <laughs> that was glorious. We didn't have a sudden... That face even being, like, the retelling after the fact. <laughs> So and then he wakes up and it's a Hiroshima. So did Brian when I told him in the car before the movie. <laughs> I was like, no. He's like, so you know little boy, right? I'm like, yeah. Fuck like, Age of Ultron. Let's just like, talk about little boy. <laughs> yeah. Little boy again. And then after that, I'll tell you all about old fashion. The sequel is uh, <laughs> sequel's called Fat Man. It's about a real, just a really fat guy and it's basically the exact same story. <laughs> These are my favorite ones to do because... There's just four of us in the car. We're just gonna fucking ramble. We talk about so much. Yeah. And also the movie. It was good. What do you want? <laughs> like some of my favorite ones are like the Guardians of the Galaxy video. And uh I think we mentioned we the movie that? twice in that one. <laughs> Didn't we also do that with Captain America too? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> and uh I think the first amazing Spider Man, we were just like eh, bah, bah, bah. Iron Man three. Well, yeah. there was a lot of talk about Iron Man 3 during Iron Man 3 because well, I how pissed off Alex yeah. was. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> oh, the goddamn... Uh. <laughs> In this movie, was there anything like... Uh, with both of you guys know in the comics and everything, was there anything that you necessarily maybe didn't like or that was maybe like really different? Or Well, there was a lot different and... That's the, the the thing with the MCU, the, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, is they take a lot of story liberties. Like in this, uh, Ultron's whole origin. That is not Ultron's origin oh, in the okay. comics. Uh, Tony Stark has nothing to do with creating Ultron. It's uh, Hank Pym, who is the original Ant-Man, creates Ultron. Uh, mostly because he's insecure. Um, <laughs> no, seriously. He's insecure. Yeah, things, things are kind of rocky in his life at that yeah. point. and. It's like, oh, I'll build a murder butt. Yeah, pretty much. It's just what you do. It's, it's, How it's the original, just like in Chappie. <laughs> the original Ultron looked like a refrigerator with a face carved into it. Yeah, yeah. Why didn't they do that? That'd be amazing. <laughs> yeah, I can't imagine why that, <laughs> that wasn't the one that came up. Come but, on, you've seen the refrigerator. <laughs> Dude, yeah. if it was still voiced by James Spader, it would still be in The scarce shit. fucking fridge. Jesus. Oh my god. But yeah, no. Got no strings on me. Clank, that's clank, different clank, than the clank, comics. Clank. Ah, ah, <laughs> let's throw my fridge out and just get delivery from that one. <laughs> and like a lot, there are a lot of things that are different in the Marvel Cinematic Universe from the comics, but the thing that they always get right is they get the core of the characters right. And mm. they make it. Like, even if the origin is different from mm -hmm. Ultron and to a certain degree Vision, they still get the core of the characters right. Yeah. Yeah, like yeah, the, the. Ultron's the, all about daddy issues. The the idea of everything is there. The fact that like, despite the fact that he's a robot, the 
the whole point of Ultron is he is just filled with so much arrogance and and hubris that he just he can't fathom why people are so damaged and why we're in charge and you know wants to fix that but at the same time he can't not play into the typical bad guy role because he's still programmed to be an idiot yeah see because i something that happened in the movie that i didn't anticipate was because I, I expected the character to be kind of like bible thumping soliloquize sol- soliloquizing but i didn't expect like the, the childishness and like the just the humanity of like just the quips that he'd do yeah like, yeah are we almost well, done I, I don't mean to be pushy <laughs> well, that's, that's the thing is like he's the childishness i thought was fitting the quips like there there was a lot more quips than i would have expected out of ultron but in the pacing and the storytelling of this movie they worked great they well, worked great too because it's james spader yeah. doing it yeah it was yeah. so surprising coming out of that character yeah like spader is this movie's spaderific, man. Like he's simultaneously, he can be terrifying and funny and really passive aggressive. A lot of times, all three at once. Like, yes. like the terrifying and the funny go hand in hand most of the time. Yeah. Like at, at the beginning, like when he just comes into being and Jarvis is kind of like trying Fucking to talk him Christ. down, just like just just little snippets of like, uh-huh. well, hang hang on, wait a minute. Okay, well, that, well, that doesn't make sense, and you can just like see the rage building, but it's yeah. James Spader, so yes. it's just really calm and terrifying. Uh huh. The only thing, the more mad he is, is quiet. He is. <laughs> yeah. The only thing that this character was missing from some other Spader characters is that we didn't get to see Ultron have a wild sex life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, well. He wasn't doing lines of blow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm used to that in my Spader Robert Downey Jr. movie. Just like, Were you the one telling well, me that when James only we Spader... had enough time to bring Jocasta into? Oh. When uh, James oh. Spader did a, a cameo on Frasier, he did an interview afterwards oh. that he had just recorded the whole thing, just buck-ass naked. Yeah, in he was one of the call-ins on Frasier, and he was just asked to do it. Like, he'd never seen the show before, and he was talking about it later on Conan, and he said, he goes, it was the best job I ever did. He goes, I just had to make this phone call, and I was just naked in bed. And Conan's like, what, you were naked in bed? And Spader's like, hey, when I'm in bed, I'm naked. If you're going to be in bed with me, you got to be naked too. <laughs> I love that man. Ultron <laughs> was naked throughout this whole movie. Yes. So. No clothing whatsoever. <laughs> Look at one scene, he kind of had like like a drape pulled over him. But, yeah. but even then, it, that was, honestly, it was full front. I mean, <laughs> That was honestly a cool little Easter egg, actually. What like, was? um, because... Uh, uh, Ultron, when he, like, uh, one of the first Ultron issues, not the first, but one of the first when he actually gets, like, a body and stuff, mm-hmm. like, he disguises himself in, like, a red cloak and goes around as a different guy. Mm-hmm. So when he has that, like, red cloak pulled over him, I was like, ah, oh, that's a neat little reference that <laughs> no one else would have thought to do except for Joss Whedon. I kind of wondered about that in the moment. Like, yeah. we, we've seen his face already. Yeah. It was. It, it was look just, at me, I'm hideous. It was just a, <laughs> I, that was monster. very much a little tiny <laughs> Easter egg. Can you tell me, who is Helen Cho? Because I feel like when she showed up, I heard, like, aha! To my right. If that's a character in comic books, which it might be, it's somebody I'm not terribly familiar with. Okay. Yeah, that, that was the same thing for me. Is like, like, sure, she's somebody, but it, it didn't, like, immediately, like, trigger in my head, like, oh, yes, the Helen Cho. Yeah. Because, like, isn't Amadeus Cho a guy? So maybe Amadeus Cho is a guy, but I... Yeah, but it, it obviously <laughs> wasn't a play on that, I don't think. You really good job of grind, just dragging these things to a grinding halt. <laughs> <laughs> Let's all think about a dude for a second. Mm. Oh, Give us yeah. a second. Give us a second. Right. Something to this. Yeah. Wait, why am I even thinking about this? So <laughs> how am I going to know the answer to this? <laughs> we like when <laughs> the one comic book review we did where the. the a comic book people are at was when me and Jillian were at X Men Days of Future Past. It's a lot of like I think that person at the end was someone I don't really know who. <laughs> <laughs> Jillian's. Because well, like when speaking as a non comic book person, uh, just by proxy, mm-hmm. when you can tell in a movie like this when you're supposed to be like ha ha, yeah. but nothing. Just <laughs> 
<laughs> well, hell, there's been several times where at the end of one of these, I'll lean over, to, like, there'll be, like, the stinger at the end or mm -hmm. something like that, and I'll lean over to Brian, like, who was that? <laughs> I remember you did that at the end of the first Avengers, like, it did that, that big reveal of, like, Thanos, and you're like, why is everyone happy? <laughs> <laughs> who, is, who is that, man? Uh, it's Thanos. Are you sure? It looks like Hellboy. I think it's Hellboy. I'm going with Hellboy. <laughs> I think you're wrong, Brian. It's Hellboy. <laughs> you proved me wrong yet again, Brad. <laughs> it was Hellboy all along. <laughs> Fucking knew it. Called that shit. <laughs> He's purple, man. He's the Grimace. <laughs> <laughs> man, they weren't the Grimace into the MCU. Yeah. Fuck genius. That's how it all ends. Nothing can stop the Grimace. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I saw none of this coming. Marvel Comic Universe. That one took me a second. <laughs> <laughs> the MCU? Yeah. Oh, it's just this sweet new teen show on the CW. I was about to say that. <laughs> <laughs> it's got Peter Gallagher on there. It's like the angry dad. Oh, man. Chad Michael Murray's so good on that show. Those kids at the MCU, it's so fucking I think you guys are just money. thinking of the OC now. <laughs> That's no. No, it's the MCU. <laughs> Obvi. It's completely different. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just be back here. <laughs> we'll just be back here thinking of more tangents. <laughs> no, I, I I thought this movie it it, sewed up my nose. <laughs> it it had a lot of good moments. It had a lot of fan service moments. It to did it. have a lot of fan service, but uh, I don't think any but, of it was terribly forced. Yeah, but I it it was on the whole. I mean, I I, I enjoyed the experience. It it somehow managed to have a lot of like you know like slowdowns and, and exposition moments sandwiched in between all the action, but it never really felt like everything was, like, grinding to a halt. That was well, the thing I liked, how like, they kind of balanced everything, because this thing is essentially an action movie from start to goddamn finish. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say there's maybe 20 minutes of downtime and what... What was the running on time on this? Like 2.20. 2.20. Whedon's original cut was, like, 3.20. <laughs> so he cut, like, an hour. I want to see the director's cut of this shit. Edition. No, I hope so. That, that, that's, time that Marvel is Marvel. The Marvel <laughs> yeah, Studios has another, never done another that. Another hour at Hawkeye's. I love it. Yeah, like, the, the movie they went to the farmhouse for fucking Ninja Turtles and just dicked around for a while. That that was, like, I loved that part. Though. I did too. I love that. I love that they devoted like a lot of time in this to Hawkeye. Yeah. The Hawkeye yeah, was yeah. great. You were saying it didn't Give, grind to a halt, but I felt like it did at that point. But that was good. You uh -huh. know, it wasn't like they they gave us a breather. The yeah. characters a breather. They oh. gave us a breather and characters a like you. Said, and also, like, I love that they spent so much time with Hawkeye because, God damn it, I hate Hawkeye cynicism <laughs> so fucking much. <laughs> Clayton Barton is one of my favorite comic book characters. Oh yeah, I fucking love time. Hawkeye. I was, that's oh. who I always played in the video oh, yeah. game. Well, and shit, got arrows and shit. Uh, <laughs> Matt Fraction's uh, Hawkeye that was going there for like the last like year yeah. or so. That was that's a great fucking book. Well, he, he's uh, he's a great character, and the Marvel Universe character is is a quite a bit different from the what we see in the movies but it's still you know the core is still kind of there but it's Jeremy Renner being awesome yeah. <laughs> but I, I did kind of like that they uh, they they took some parts from the the ultimate Marvel universe and gave him the family and stuff like it was nice it, like the, the fact that he's not afraid that. to use a gun if he needs to he just yeah. would rather not but just yeah. to mm -hmm. I mean if he has to shoot a yeah. guy he will shoot a guy I mean, well, it's yeah. not a big deal and he, some of my favorite moments are with him, like when he's like talking down uh, Elizabeth Olsen in it, like you can stay in here or if you come outside, you're an Avenger. Yeah. Like that you was do a, your job. Yeah. Yeah. Like that was a damn good moment. I mean, there's, it's true what you said earlier, like there's some stuff you could say about it, but it, it works. You know, there is a lot of stuff in this movie that is certainly setting up for future movies, mm -hmm. but it works. And I think that was, to me, that was the only thing that was... I didn't enjoy about this movie as much as a lot of the other Marvel movies is this one was definitely like it had more of a checklist to it you know like it, that Marvel gave we like you gotta get this in because this is what we're going towards it did but it was integrated fine in the film it right did, it didn't it wasn't like Amazing Spider-Man 2 where it rendered the movie a mess yeah no you know what I mean no it was very smooth and, and that's the thing like the, with the first Avengers and this one too it's it, the Kevin Feige, the guy who runs Marvel Studios, has said like, you know, the the single movies like the Captain America mm -hmm. movies, the Thor movies, the Iron Man movies, 
those are those movies where we have time to like build a character and stuff like that. With the Avengers movies, really what we're doing is the team up movie, and it should it's just gonna be a big action scene. And that's what I've loved about both the Avengers movies. It's like it's not forgetting about the other movies and what's going no. on, but it doesn't feel the need to like sit on it for too long. It it'll mention things that you're like, okay, that's still going on. But it, it gets it out of the way without it well, feeling forced. I mean, there is... You're right. I mean, it's a team-up movie. There's a hell of a lot of action in the movie. Yeah. But at the same time, there it isn't a shallow movie. No. And it's not hollow in terms of the characters. Each character in this movie is given their own little moments. Yeah. Whether, you know, Hawkeye, whether it's uh, Robert Downey Jr. A lot of Robert Downey Jr. Um, uh the relationship between Hulk and Black Widow, too. Like, they're each given moments that don't seem like they're out of place at all or just shoehorned into the movie. It's 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 integrated nicely into it to where it all flows and keeps it from being just an exhausting two and a half hours of just an action sequence. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which well, can be really exhausting. Well, and, and yeah, with, with, with how they, they handled the characters, I, I thought that worked really well, too, but... With, there are so many characters that get introduced during the course of this movie. And yeah. I'd say maybe with the exception of possibly like a little bit like the vision, like everybody gets enough time to where you actually get a decent feel of their characters. It's not just like, here's another person who's going to be throwing punches. Mm-hmm. Like it, everybody kind of has like a satisfying enough amount of story to at least build something off of them. Well, it's like, we're like, you you understand like oh when when this character is pissed off you you can get behind the fact like yeah yeah I don't know who the fuck this character is but I can I can understand based on like the four little things they mentioned in the past hour why this person would yeah. be pissed off why this person would be happy why you know like these two aren't getting along right now like you get enough information where like it all makes sense it's not just like people doing things and you're like okay they're best friends now. I don't know why, <laughs> but the story said now they're best friends and they high yeah. five. That makes no sense. Nothing set no, that up. Like everything, like, everything evolved. was was pretty well. Yeah, and <clears throat> you know, I think uh, yeah, Vision was the character that probably didn't have the most character moments. He had a couple really great fucking moments, but, but his best character moment was the end of the movie. But yeah, I think it's just because but that like, gives it, you the core <laughs> of who Vision is. Yeah, but and I, that's I what think you it's need just because it's moving into the it, future. It took so long bringing him into the story. Yeah, but that's to me that's a good thing because it, well, yeah, I mean it, it, they didn't rush to like get him in there right yeah. out of the gate, mm. but like I, I just think like it, by the by the time he showed up, it was like okay, everything's already set in motion. You know, this is this is happening now. We're going into like the last act of the film, so it is. It didn't give him a lot of time to really like set up anything more than just like, you know, a a brief little bit to be like, okay, well, we know he's a good guy. Like Thor's vouching for him, so all right, cool. Let's get yeah. to fighting. Yeah, yeah. Eh. I mean, by the time they're fighting side by side with him, they've effectively known him for maybe like seven hours total, if that. <laughs> but it's. I mean, I'm, I'm only assuming seven hours because it was it was dark when he was floating outside the window, and it was light by the time they started fighting. No, dude, but but in the mo- in the movie universe, <laughs> yeah. he's fucking worthy. <laughs> God damn it! Was like that, that's enough. That's all I need to know. He's fucking worthy. Was that true in the comic books? Could I, you do that? As far as I know, Vision has never lifted Mignola. Uh I don't think he's ever tried. Yeah, he, I don't think he's ever come up. Yeah, um, it's pronounced because, meow meow. Yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Ken um, Dennings. <laughs> I, I had kind of read a spoiler that someone else picks up the hammer, and my money for that was, <laughs> was easily on Captain America. Um, yeah, I mean, because he, he's done it several times. Yeah, he's, he's used it before. Um, and <laughs> if you think of a character in the Marvel Universe who's like who's worthy of this, you, you think Cap. Yeah. Um, the Cap and Thor team ups like during the battle sequence are some of my favorite parts. Because mm-hmm. like they, they those characters worked so well together that I thought they did a great job of that with just about everybody in those big action scenes so where people I. are just throwing stuff around and But those like, two in particular, it's like oh, yeah. it, there was there were scenes where they were just like working as like two parts of a whole, like bonking the shield and, and that's stuff. That's what I like about a lot of the action se- between this one and the first one too. That's what I like about a lot of these action sequences because of how many characters there are there are here. It's not <clears throat> 
It's not clumsily edited. It's not confusing. They're all working together for the same goal, which keeps yeah. the movie from feeling like a mess. It keeps the movie from feeling like it's three different movies edited together with a bunch of different characters in it. And they each have their own individual little jobs to contain whatever violence is going on in this city. And there's, it's not like watching, like it's certainly, <coughs> it's certainly like there's a lot of move. There's a lot of camera movement. There's a lot of, there's shaking and stuff like that, but it's not confusing. It's not like watching, no, it's not. it's not like watching like a Transformers movie where you can't make heads or tails really what's going on because characters look too similar or it's it's a whole lot more fluid in this. It's completely fluid. And I felt that like the the casualty levels that were taking place during the battle sequences were believable without being horrifying because I noticed several cuz I watched But uh, but even fast. even more so than like say I'm sorry to interrupt you but like in Man of Steel, yeah, there's a ton of casualties. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And this, they recognize those casualties. Yeah, because like they, I was watching Fast Five the other day, and like there's a scene where they like, bonk the bus over and it flips like 20 oh, yeah. times. And they're like, luckily, no one was hurt. <laughs> and then on the other side of the spectrum, there's yeah, there's the Superman movie where it's just like piles of wreckage as far as the eye can see. And this movie, it it was believable because people were dying, in this but they were trying to mitigate it because they're the good guys. Which yeah, I, I actually I thought that same thing the first time. Like here, like. A, couple weeks ago when I actually watched Fast Five for the first time. It's like it's great, they right? f- that bus is packed with people and they flip the shit out of it and then he just walks out like it's like everyone's fine. It's like shows up fucking well, yeah. happily and he's like luckily no one was injured. <laughs> so I can only assume where that happened. <laughs> Pawnee Indiana. Exactly. Because <laughs> a nice reference point. Well that could have been an, a little th- thing like after the credits, just suddenly a reporter and no one was injured. <laughs> and everyone's just fine. I don't know if I believe this. But this is like, I mean, in this movie when there's all this destruction going on, they're working very hard at getting people away from all of yeah. this. And well, yeah, and I, I like that that was like the big impetus like they, they put on everything. It's like, it's like, well, this is probably, no matter how we do this fight, before they even knew what the plan that Ultron had was, they're like, we need to get these fucking people out of the city. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's just, that, that's thing number one on and the list of things to do. He's trying to get the Hulk out of the city. <laughs> <laughs> Which is that, uh, Veronica? Was that from the comic book? The Hulkbuster armor. Um, calling it Veronica, no, but it's a nice touch. I thought that was adorable. It, is that a reference to something? Or? Well, the Hulk's girlfriend is uh, Betty. Betty Ross. Ah. The opposite of Betty is ah. Veronica. Uh. Random. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't but, get enough Archie comics jokes in your movies? a little bit tenuous. But, but, can, but very Whedon-esque, though. Mm-hmm. I mean, hell, he, he's basically set up, you know, Betty and Veronica-style situations and all kinds of stuff. Like, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, love triangle. You know, it it, it, it fits with, with his uh his style. So uh Matt Fraction, you he, said? He's a comic book writer. He's it sounds like the alter ego of like a math based superhero. <laughs> like I'm sorry, I've been sitting back here thinking that for like ten minutes and I felt the need to bring it up during a lull. It was like like Division Man, but mild mannered math teacher Matt. Fraction? Math man. I don't know about this. (laughs) Mathematical. (laughs) All the powers of a math. (laughs) I was good at math in school, but I don't study that anymore. (laughs) Matt Fraction's gonna get you. Don't bother me, math man. (laughs) Graduated years ago. Did someone say math? No, I didn't. (laughs) (laughs) Would you want to mention what you... uh, didn't like about it. Ow! God damn it! It was such a little thing. Called I Yana. did really like the movie. It's just there was one particular scene because <sighs> Bruce Banner and um, I keep wanting to call her Scarlet, but uh, Black Widow. Well, her name is technically. I know, but there's like other character called Scarlet in this movie, so I'm trying not to. Well, Scarlet Witch. You yeah. could call her Wanda. Oh, okay. Oh, that's my train of thought. Anyway, they're they're like uh, kind of had this will they won't they relationship going in the movie, <coughs> and there's one scene where like uh, Scarlet's trying to get him to like run away with her so mm-hmm. they can, you know, dance on a beach in Fiji or what have you, and he's <laughs> like they're at at um, Hawkeye's house and like surrounded with like children things and family things, and he's like, look, we can never have this life, you know, I mm-hmm. I am medically unable to have children, and she's like, that's okay, neither am I, so I'm a monster too. No, and that's... I'm like, no, don't, don't do that. 
Why? Why would you do that? No, her her referencing herself as a monster was her past as a assassin. I feel like that's probably killer. what they were going for. But what it came across was like the I'm barren, so we're both destroyed. <laughs> So that was the, that was the one thing that I didn't mm-hmm. like about this movie, and probably I'm gonna catch flack for being oversensitive, but like in I the moment, it. I was a little bit horrified. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you'll catch flack because it's not like this movie sucks because this happened. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna get way more flack for like Jesus Christ with the fucking tangents. <laughs> <laughs> Matt Fraction's gonna get you. <laughs> he might. He's, he doesn't live that far away, apparently. You come down here and just beat the fuck out of you guys. Man. <laughs> he adds peace to the community. Uh, I hear tell he's a nice fellow, fellow though. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Throws an algebra qu- equation at him and just confuses him for a few minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a job for a psychic algebra boy. <laughs> On actual Matt Fraction things, boy, I hope they use his Immortal Iron Fist story for the upcoming Iron Fist. I would love TV that, series. but I, I think they're going to have to do some origin work before they can get into that craziness. I hope Iron Fist is wearing the same costume that he normally is, because that costume is adorable. I think you're thinking of his old costume. Probably. It's like a... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know yeah, what this character and... looks like. Got, I'm surprisingly like, okay with the uh, rumored casting for Iron he's Fist, He's got like little slippers with like about yeah, the yeah, in the toes, Ryan and then like a green I unitard, and then a mask with like big Spider-Man on his Alright. He's fabulous. <laughs> it, <laughs> you know, they're not going to bring the Rizzo back just, as just Iron the booties, Fist. <laughs> just the booties and I'll be happy. Not the man with the Iron Fist. <laughs> <laughs> and no, it, there was Iron Fist in the Crippled <laughs> Avengers that I watched the other day. <laughs> but no, the, the, uh, the more recent looks that he's had, it's, mm. it's more just like... <laughs> like uh, like a a green bodysuit with like a uh, sash and then like the dragon on the on the chest of it and one gigantic iron fist. <laughs> no, oh. well, son of a bitch. <laughs> but no, it, it, it's more it, it's more his his suit more recently is more in keeping with something you'd see like like Bruce Lee wear. Okay, like Game of Death. Yeah, sweet. Yeah. <laughs> well, and then like you got Shang Chi that that basically. Is Bruce Lee? Yeah, like even even like the the newer Avengers books, he's just wearing that actual suit, just red with a blue stripe on the side. I mean, well, when are we gonna come get our on. superhero based on Bruce Lai? <laughs> Bruce I'm Lee. sure he's out Bruce there. Bruce Leong. That's Iron Faced. <laughs> <laughs> One gigantic Iron Faced. <laughs> steel Serpent, I suppose, or Steel Phoenix, I guess. That's Serpent. Steel Serpent. Still be, be Steel funnier? Serpent. Because he's well, he a gigantic steel himself. serpent. Mm, yes. <laughs> well, in the comics. So you haven't right? finished Daredevil yet, have you? So mm-hmm. to speak. Oh, did, did you catch the, the reference? <laughs> yeah. What reference? Yeah. <laughs> he's right, I wouldn't have gotten it. Yeah. <laughs> no, really? No. You wouldn't have realized that Madame Gao was in fact the crane mother? Oh, oh well, dude, dude, I got obviously. that. Obviously. I read Quail Man. <laughs> I'm done here. Pow! <laughs> <laughs> we just we need one of those screens, like in a limo. Yeah, the camera can be uh, on this side. We're done we here. Aha! <laughs> 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 uh-huh. They trick you, knock knock, other camera. <laughs> so <laughs> they're over there so they can make out. <laughs> Two cameras all along. <laughs> you know, like in a limo, when the limo drivers put the thing out so they can make out with each other. <laughs> I'm having way too much fun. Shady ass limo drivers. <laughs> <laughs> well, would you guys recommend the movie? <laughs> Highly. <laughs> Highly. In fact, I kind of want to come back and see it again tomorrow. But I don't know if I'd I go that far. But yeah, I wouldn't go that far. Like, I mean, it's fun. Like a but... month or two, I'll, I'll like to watch it again. Mm-hmm. And me, I think it's more like that. Now I want to like sit down and watch it and look for weird shit that I didn't oh, catch. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. I mean, um, I can see that. Hey, wait till it's on DVD so you can pause it on the Howard the Duck. Howard the Duck is in this? Awesome. Just for a second. <laughs> no Howard the Duck. It did have Stan Lee. Excelsior. <laughs> Shashi. Drunk Stan Lee. That's what How you get. How old is that man at this point? Stan Lee, he's early, early late 80s, early 90s. Yeah. He's holding in there. Yeah. Yeah, well, he's got more money than fucking God. <laughs> 
That does help. <laughs> it does. <laughs> keeping you alive. For like, Stuff it straight into your Literally heart, for babies. like 20 years, Marvel Comics paid him like a million dollars a year to do nothing. Mm-hmm. Just, they paid him to be Stan Lee. Wear the big glasses. Rock the stash. Yeah. Say Excelsior. No oh, Channel said. Awesome does that with me sometimes. <laughs> right, awesome. Here's a bunch of money. It's, don't do anything for a while. Just put you right. in a glass case. <laughs> the wall, next to Howard the Duck. <laughs> if I get to hang out with Howard the Duck, awesome. <laughs> Man, I'm looking for that new uh, that new series they have coming up during uh, the new Secret Wars thing. Howard the Human. Hmm? No, I didn't see that yet. Yeah. <coughs> he ends up on a world where everyone else is an anthropomorphic animal, and he gets turned into a human. <laughs> he looks like a really ugly up. guy. <laughs> I can see that. Reverse, oh heavenly dog. Honestly, like, like from, from like the, the cover shots I've seen, like, he basically looks like Ted Levine's character uh, on Monk, Captain Stottlemyre. <laughs> what about Ted Levine's character in Little Boy? <laughs> Was he in Little Boy? He is. Nice. <laughs> He's kind of the main racist in the town. Jap! <laughs> <laughs> they do say that a lot. But Jap or I'd fuck me so hard. Man... <laughs> If he said that in the movie, he'd be like, you guys are crazy if you thought this was going to get a PG. <laughs> <laughs> you get one at least. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah. you get one, I would fuck me so hard. <laughs> <laughs> Any more than that, you get a PG-13. Hmm. Every yeah. other time you have to say, I'd fudge me so hard. <laughs> <laughs> That's even creepier. This is what happens when you find a man and... <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> It's always creepier when it's not a swear word. Yeah. Haven't you heard that Patton Oswalt bit? Oh, yeah, yeah. I sprayed out her hoo-ha with my goof juice. Ah, oh, he stole my line. <laughs> it's my pickup line. It's gonna look like a rat in a rainstorm. <laughs> well, well, we figured out the answer of whether or not we were gonna get uh, the Batman v Superman trailer. <laughs> I told you, man. I told you it probably wasn't gonna happen. Are we doing trailers now? Because we got like 20. Did we? Yeah. Fuck, we got a lot. Yeah, we got a lot of trailers. There's 10, 11? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Damn. We did get a fucking lot. Yeah, they didn't show the Batman v Superman trailer. Yeah, I, I kind of knew that wasn't going to happen, and I'm, I'm kind of glad, because I don't want to watch that fucking trailer anymore. Mm. Like, that trailer, it breaks a part of... People in the comments for the little boy video are already giving me shit for like not liking the next Superman movie based on the trailer. It's like, it's a shitty trailer and it's a sequel to a shitty movie. <laughs> I, I like I like that when Batman's in his big like you know Dark Knight Returns robot armor yeah. that he sounds like a robot. I still like that better than Christian Bale's Batman voice. <laughs> 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 no, I, it's it's like we said in the little boy video. Like, I, I I don't know how that movie will turn out, but like Affleck will most likely be my favorite part yeah. of it. I think I think he's gonna be awesome. Hey, it's pictures just... the that's from that movie, right? The picture of him as, as the Joker. No, no, that's, that's from uh, Suicide Squad. Uh -uh. The Jared Leto picture. Yes. Yeah, that's oh, my bad. Suicide Squad. What what did we get? Well, we got Southpaw, which oh. is that really nah. depressing movie about a boxer who gets his wife shot by accident. Kind of wish we got the Batman trailer because I'm sort of sick of seeing the trailer for Southpaw. <laughs> yeah, Southpaw's becoming the, well, the latest. Twice, seen I'm already it sick of it. Way too many times. Yeah, I think I've caught that trailer like four times in the past I have month too. and a half. Like I think about everything I've gone to in the past few weeks has had that trailer in front of it. Honestly, I'm sure it's a fine movie. I'm just sick of seeing the trailer yeah. for it. I have no interest in watching yeah, it. It looks like a Stone Cold bummer. I've I've seen the trailer I think two or three times now. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, like the first time I saw it, I'm like, wow, that that looks really good. Like that looks like it'll be a cool movie. And every time since then, it's just like. Okay, next. Yeah. Yeah. For the yeah. first half of the trailer, I'm like, yeah, that does look like a really cool movie. And then his wife dies, everything goes to shit, and I'm like, nope, 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 nope. Yeah, it starts out a little like Rocky Three, only if Clubber Lang shot Adrian, <laughs> shot Adrian Balboa. <laughs> That's an apt simile. Uh, Fantastic Four, robot. which that looks really good. The Fantastic Four movie? Uh-huh. No, it doesn't. I think it does. <laughs> no. It, I'm still I, hit or miss on it. I, 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 
I still can't get a read on how that's going to go. It, it does seem like they've changed the origin story a well, shit ton. Well, it's, they it's went for like the lot ultimate more, universe yeah, so origin story, okay. which I'm fine with. My thing is, it's... It provides them a way of, like, having wacky shit happen without relying on... Then they just go up to space and come back weird. Yeah. <laughs> which, I I, I'm fine with them doing that, that version of the origin. For the most part, I, I'm okay with Miles Teller, um... As Reed Richards, most of the casting's not bad. I wish I have issues with the way they they cast the the Storm family. I don't care that Johnny Storm's not white. They should just both be the same in my brain. I know there are mixed race families out there. It just in my brain, it's the Fantastic Four. I'm just gonna shake your head for just just a little while. <laughs> and they um, call me the slave owner. <laughs> Well, I don't own them. <laughs> you just think they should be mutually exclusive. <laughs> no, it's but equal. No, not at just. It's just the no. I come from a multiracial family. Like, it's just the way I picture Sue and Johnny Storm. Like, ah, fuck, it doesn't fucking matter. <laughs> you mean you picture like not? Oh, how are they doing it? Is it like one of them's adopted in it? Possibly, or, or, or yeah. like by marriage or something. Okay. Yeah, and, it seems like it's probably like yeah, a situation where it's you know. Because it looks like their dad's a black guy. Yeah, exactly. So maybe he just married a white woman. And one of them is blacker than the other. It's sort of a Brady yeah. Bunch type moment. Oh, that could be it too. Yeah, and that's. Wait, what? Or do you mean like they got married after they had children? Yes. yes. Okay, I meant what more. What do you mean? Well, I meant the you know because uh, Alice. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, one of them's not the maid. When, like, a, a black person marries a white person, they have babies. They don't turn out the exact same color all the time. You know, there's a v variation. It could happen that there'd be it, a black it, son and it, a white daughter. It could. Th that's I feel like we need to call Irving and ask him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't think we need his opinion on. It's like, oh, the Fantastic Three and Three Fifths. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Yeah, that's more white people their opinion on this particular. Uh, do you issue. have an earpiece in your ear and Irving's <laughs> communicating things to you? From my mind to your mind. <laughs> my what feeling. The fuck. My feeling on the Fantastic Four movie, in all honesty, is. The trailers don't look bad. The images I've seen don't look bad. I have faith in the filmmaker. The cast is decent. And it might be a good movie. But to me, it's I really think it's going to be the case. This might be a good movie. But it's to me, I don't think it's going to be a good Fantastic Four movie. I think the tone's completely wrong. It's, yeah, it, it seems too dark and too bleak. And That's kind of what I, I liked about it. I, I think it looked... I mean, my thing about it is I think it looks fine in that I think it looks way fucking better than the last two movies. Yeah, because the last ones were just way too wacky. You know, so I feel like this one, they're taking things serious. Here's my thing with it. The Fantastic Four, like any other superhero group out there, superhero team, they have dozens of villains. So far, this will be the third big release movie for the Fantastic <laughs> Four that's had Doctor Doom as the villain. Mm. And wasn't he technically still the bad guy in the Corman one? Yeah, Doctor yeah. Doom was the bad guy in that, yeah. Mm. There's no, they sure they there's no realize that there are <laughs> other villains they have. Like yeah. They could work with anything out there under yeah. the sun. But for some reason, every single movie so far has been like, like, who should we pair him up against? I don't know. <laughs> Doctor Doom. Did they ever fight the Vulture? Because that would be great. Well, he's a Spider-Man villain, so they the don't Spider-Man have... teamed up with Fantastic Four a couple times. I thought maybe it might have had a crossover. And the Vulture is pretty awesome, because he's just a tiny, rickety old man with big old wings. T turns out the entire movie is them fighting the infant terrible. <laughs> Bye, Beast Man. When am I going to get my damn Bye, Beast movie? The one character you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucking sticking with it, goddammit. I got one more, Lady Stiltman. <laughs> Spider-Man villain. Damn it! Nah, the... Ladies, well, Stiltman. Stiltman is, is a classic Daredevil yeah, no, and Punisher villain. No, 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 Lady Stiltman. Lady Stiltman. That is pretty yeah, much Spider-Man Spider -Man and once or twice Deadpool. Damn it! Because it's, it's one of my favorites. Because Lady Stiltman. <laughs> my favorite Stiltman, Stiltman is still Caligula. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the last witch hunter. <laughs> yeah, I, I Frankenstein too. Which is the Vin Diesel and Egret from. Uh, Game of Thrones vehicle. That. 
It's going to be what that it looks is. Like it's going to be amazing. <laughs> it Our could be amazing. <laughs> It'll be great in three or four years when we finally get to see it. <laughs> I'm trying to think of every movie that I thought it was until it happened. Like, it's like, what was that one? Uh, Mortal Instruments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mortal Instruments. Is this the eighth Seventh son? son. <laughs> um, Underworld Five. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, this is the reboot they were talking about. I mean, I don't know. Like, it, Vin Diesel fighting some witches with magic sword. It could be amazing. It's gonna be amazing. <laughs> honestly, least, Either way, it's gonna be amazing. I'm mm. cool. I'm genuinely psyched for this movie. <laughs> I honest, I'm I'm I honestly though it. thought like watching the trailer. I honestly thought until they started talking about like secret orders and shit like that. Like it's like oh fuck, did they finally make a like a third sequel or I guess second sequel, third movie. In the uh, Triple X series? <laughs> I think they're planning that, actually. It's like, oh man, they they gave it back to him from Ice Cube. And they're taking the Pitch Black series back to, like, him dicking around on goofy alien planets. <laughs> yes. <laughs> taking all these Vin Diesel movies back. <laughs> Sequels do everything. Can't wait for the prequel to Saving Private Ryan. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Losing Private Ryan. <laughs> San Andreas. <laughs> wow, the timing on that movie. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, I, that, I, uh, modern day disaster movies do nothing the, for me. The entirety of that trailer looked like the first hour <coughs> to two hours yeah. of 2012 exactly. before they left LA. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, like, for I mean, me, some, some movies you kind of just get the sense that it's Los Angeles being up its own ass. I mean, uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, um... Just cause, like... If, this, if the movie had been made in, like, 96, I'd have been like, fuck yeah, but... Now I just... If I, it had been made I in 96, it would have been just direct to fucking video. Yeah, exactly. I, I, <laughs> I have no... When I see a disaster movie, I'm sorry, I want to see and shit get destroyed. still starring a pro wrestler. Like, yeah. I want to see, like, you know, sets and shit get destroyed and shit like that. And I'm sorry, you could pull up just a frame of this fucking movie and you cannot tell the goddamn difference between this and every other goddamn disaster yeah. movie that comes out. There's no awe in it. There's no... There's nothing. There's nothing there. It's just hollow fucking effects being destroyed for two and a half hours. Yeah. And that's it. I've no interest in in modern day disaster movies like that it's so you, gonna be so you're calling dibs on that one? Oh, i'll probably see it <laughs> <So> 2012 <laughs> hell yeah <laughs> the only thing that you can hope in something like in a movie like that isn't the action sequences it's not the effects because they all look the goddamn same it's whether or not something stupid is gonna happen with the characters <laughs> like book ending 2012 with whether or not his daughter needs huggies anymore yeah. <laughs> I still though that that the defining moment of that movie was like twenty minutes in when stuff started happening and like that couple was in like a fucking grocery store. Like, yeah. Like I don't know. I just I just feel like we're drifting apart. This floor splits right between them and pulls the aisles like twenty yes. feet apart. Ow. Oh, and by the way, this movie was three hours long. <laughs> twenty twelve is is pretty goddamn. Epic. And back when we back when we had movies actually coming out as midnight releases. And here, here's the thing too: we just we just went because we were dumb. Like we were just like we had nothing to do. It was midnight. We had nothing to do. I'm like, hey Brian, you want to go see twenty twelve? They're showing it at midnight. Hell like, yes. Sure. So we did. This was way before we started doing this shit. So we didn't even review it in the car afterwards. It's like, we just went to see it. It's like, wow, that was dumb. I should go get like an hour of sleep because I got to work in three hours. I think I reviewed it the next day just in my house. <laughs> Uh, oh, Jurassic World. <laughs> Smudge, I don't know. No, there's one later down, and I'm just going to read The you more and like more I see of Jurassic World, the it. less and less I give a flying fuck. Really? I'm really excited for it. I, I think, love Chris Pratt, though. I do, too. Yeah, I, 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 I've seen the other Jurassic Park movies, so I, I figure I'll, I'll see this one. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I'll see it. It doesn't look like anything new or groundbreaking or anything. Uh, yeah, I just want to see Chris Pratt running around with a team of fucking yeah, raptors. Yeah. Just being scared of dinosaurs. But, but more and more... Like, that I want to see, but, like, the rest of the movie and the storyline and shit, I could really give a rat's ass. I mean, it looks like... I, I, like I, in, in th there's been three other movies, and they haven't learned their fucking lesson yet. <laughs> I, yeah, <laughs> like, it is... 
I think it looks like it'll be pretty entertaining. I mean, I, I hope it'll be entertaining, and I'm sure Chris Pratt will carry the movie, and Jake Johnson's in it too. Though, <laughs> seeing how he's in none of the trailers, I wonder if he gets killed off fast. <laughs> I saw Vincent D'Onofrio in there too, didn't I? Oh, is he in it? Yeah, too? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I saw him in this trailer. I didn't see him in the first one. But it yeah. does look Kingpin's like Kingpin's gonna wrestle a dinosaur. <laughs> in terms of the plot in this, like it does look like as bad of an idea as it is originally to open up a theme park designed for dinosaurs. <laughs> what they're doing in this movie seems like a wholly worse idea. <laughs> Genetically <laughs> modify them to add a little bit more pop to our stage shows. Yeah. You have a theme park of dinosaurs. You don't need any more pop. Yeah. <laughs> well, people are bored with dinosaurs uh, now. Fucking apparently. It looks like, it's kind of, it kind of looks like the plot of Jaws 3, but with dinosaurs. <laughs> Maybe it's a plot of Deep Blue Sea and they're genetically modifying the dinosaurs. Well, I was, I was reading an article. <laughs> so that's why Jake Johnson gets killed mostly. Uh, uh, He's the Samuel L. Jackson I, of the I movie. I was reading yeah, an article today speech. from, like, the director was talking about how one of the main characters in the movie is the Tyrannosaurus Rex. And it's the same Tyrannosaurus Rex from the first one. Mm. So they've made her look a little older and a little more battle damaged. <laughs> really? And it's like, it's supposed to be the same T-Rex. Oh, right on. I'm oh, I glad there's one that. recurring character yeah. in this movie. Two, B.D. Wong. <laughs> oh my god, you're right! <laughs> <laughs> I hope he's playing the same guy. He that is. would make me smile so much. He is, he's playing the same guy. <laughs> oh. Um, pixels. <laughs> Shall we talk? Yeah, we all talk about, about to pixels. About okay, Star Wars. Yes. I am so excited for Star Wars. I'm excited for I that. I can tell from the tone of your voice right there. I am so excited. I really am. Period. At least he's no. catering it up. More I, excited I am this. dead serious. When that trailer was first released online, I watched it on my phone and like teared up mm. at work. Like like a man tear. You're right, Han Solo. I am home. <laughs> yeah, there was a line that did it. It was like, oh God, oh God. Fucking hot. It really wasn't even his line. It was Chewy reacting to it. Yeah. And then, I'm, I may be a big old softie, but that's not really the reaction that I gave. I was just like, well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I thought it was, I mean, I can't say I, a tear ran really down my eye. but so much. It's just like... It's, it's a teaser. I mean, yeah. it's a good teaser. And it's a good teaser. Yeah. Um, it definitely looks like a movie I'll see. I mean, I've, I've seen, seen all the other ones. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. granted, the last one I actually bothered to watch in theater was Phantom Menace. Guessing you could tell why I didn't see the other two. Now I'm trying to be reserved too about this this oh, one because yeah. the trailers for Phantom Menace I was excited for as well. Uh -huh. So I'm trying to like keep it down a little bit for this but one. But I think even we, by we, just looking at the teaser, this looks more like a Star Wars movie yeah. than the prequels did. <laughs> now it's got the right like tone to it. Yeah. It's that like that everything looks dirty and broken. That's how it should be. Yeah. <laughs> All clunky in it. Seventies? Eighties. 70s, 70s and 80s. Yeah. That's why I said both of them. <laughs> <laughs> Can't be wrong if I name everything. Well, 30s, 40s, well done, baby. 50s. High five. Pow. I didn't see the third one, but other than that, I saw all of them. Oh, we're I had parts of the third one recreated for me. When I, would, oh, the chosen one. when I would open your place that one time and you were watching it for the first time, I walk in and I'm like, this is what, maybe like three years ago? Something about that. Yeah. I walk in there like, oh, hey, you're watching Rift Tracks. You're sitting there in the chair. No. No. <laughs> No. This is like in the last half hour where Anakin's fucking going crazy and he walks into some room. Oh, the younglings. Like, no, it was before that. He walks into some room and then like robot, robot mice, mice follow him. <laughs> he's, right, he's sitting there just, Ugh, thanks, George. <laughs> I'm like, don't worry, buddy. I'll watch the rest with you. Because why would anyone build those? <laughs> <laughs> Who sat there like, I don't know. We killed all the real mice and I missed the experience of waking up and having some of my shit gnawed on. <laughs> It was the robot cats that built it. <laughs> okay, this one you might have to help me with because it looks like I wrote Bruce Wednesday. Uh, what? Anybody? Let me see your arm. <laughs> it's the second to last one. I can't read any of these that you Bruce wrote. Bruce Almighty 2? Yeah, Bruce Almighty. I got all the rest of them. On a what? On a boat? Where are you saying on a boat? I don't know. By, uh... No, this is one word I can assure you. This is a C, and this is a B. Okay. Bounce? Found my glasses. Um... What trailer did we get that sounded like Bruce Wednesday? Oh, that'll help. Uh... Well, you guys think I don't fucking it. know. 
I, what other fucking trailers can we get? Whatever uh, was right before Ant Man. We can discuss Ant Man while we think about it. We did get a lot of fucking trailers. Yeah. So I, I was running out of arm towards the bottom, I think was the Big problem. Wednesday? No. Fuck yeah, Big Wednesday. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Re release Big Wednesday? I'm fucking down. <laughs> I fucking don't know. I, I I don't know. We got like a million yeah, trailers. This is why in front I started writing them on my arm. Just trying to think of just bring a notepad next time. You bring a notepad next time. <laughs> yeah. I'm just thinking you thought to bring a pen. No, it was just in my purse. There's like five pens rattling around in there. I used to just type just them on my phone. Put five notepads in there. <laughs> You're too big, Brian. <laughs> why you gotta be so wee? Ant Man. So we got the trailer for Ant Man, yeah. Which. The last joke in the trailer sold me on the movie. <laughs> the last joke in the trailer is awesome. <laughs> yeah, I, I still have my reservations. I, I, it's I mean, the first Marvel movie I have a lot of reservations Even about. Even when, when Edgar Wright was still attached to it, I still had my reservations then, just because Ant-Man... I just I don't know if and I'm sure it'll do just fine, but I, it's just it, the concept of it is like, like yeah, he, he's an important character, you know... Uh, in one way, shape, or another, he's been involved with the Avengers since the fucking beginning. But I just don't know if that's a character that can like carry its own movie. I mean, there's a reason. Um, I mean, there's a reason why like they've tried multiple times with like the Hulk, and they've decided like you know what, no more Hulk movies. He's just he's in the Avengers movies, and that's it. Well, or, like I the reason why like, there's not like a Black like Paul Widow Rudd who can carry a movie. Well, yeah, I was going to say like I if think... Jurassic World I'll watch simply by dint of Chris Pratt. Then this movie I'll watch. I mean, well, oh, we watched that weird Japanese movie just because I had Paul. Oh, Rudd Gen White Cops. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah. I I think doing the Scott Lang Ant Man that it can carry a movie a little bit more than doing the uh, the the uh, Hank Ant Man, but uh, um, the Henry Pym Ant Man. Uh, just because Scott Lang, to me, I mean, you know, he, he's he got the, the redemption arc that they can do. And the little daughter who's sick, and if they do that, if they choose to do that, um, I think it could carry the movie a little more. I think, I think it has... The Hulk is just a hard concept to do in anything but on paper, I think. Well, but I just mean, like, like for a majority of people, even if you don't really know from comic stuff, like, people know who the Hulk is. Oh, yeah, yeah. People know who Captain America is. Uh, people know who Iron Man is. No one's like going around like like before Marvel announced that like you know one of the movies they wanted to make was Ant Man. Not anybody was sitting around like, man, I hope we get an Ant Man movie. There was a lot of people who said the same thing about Guardians of the Galaxy. Which I mean, to be fair, I mean, yeah, that that is kind of the case in point, especially like all the people that had like wild reservations about that one. I mean, that was mostly due to the fact that James Gunn was working on it more than oh. anything else. Can I ask a question? Sure. In the no. comics... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you may. In the comics, um, he I know he has ensmalling powers. Does he have ant powers? Like Aquaman has fish powers? Well, the, the helmet can the tune helmet into like, the same frequency that they use to communicate. So what? He's able to like... What like, does that do? Well, he, in terms of like, well, you remember he, how many I shrunk he, the kids? I remember. He can, well, like, the same thing. Yeah, they had yeah, this, this was like the small, the size of a terrier in comparison to him. With Andy, they could ride him. No, no, no. They did ride. Yeah, the, the one that was the size of a terrier was like a baby. Okay, so and, we can ride these ants. Oh yeah, and it does. flying ants, and he flies around on them and shit. Yeah, so like okay. Doll Man meets Phase Four. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait. <laughs> um. Yeah, I'm. Like I, phase four. I'm looking, <laughs> you don't really get to use those ever. I don't. They, that's why I'm looking for Ant Man. Not a whole lot of Ant related, related movies going on these days. Yeah, my only major issue. Two of them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. My only major issue with Ant Man the movie is the way they're handling the, uh, the, 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 I guess they're calling her Hope Van Dyne now instead of Janet Van Dyne. Because Janet was her mother. Yeah. Yeah, th that bugs me a little because, god damn it, the Wasp is just so key to the Marvel Universe. And kind of skipping over that character completely in favor of a character I guess is supposed to be a representation of her. Just yeah, to be, I mean, it's, I, it, I appreciate it, it, that they're keeping It's the, a little raw. I, I appreciate they're keeping the idea of Janet and, uh, and you know... Hank together. Hank together. But I want to see <laughs> Janet, man. I it's feel like as odd. a non-comic book person, like, one relevant bug power-related superhero is, you know, 
strange but feasible. Two is kind of stretching the boundaries of. Well, well the, and, and, and the, he designed it for Hank her. Hank Pym, the like original a... Ant Man, designed her powers for her. It was uh -huh. his girlfriend. So they could be like a duo. Yeah. At least she gets to be in the movie, and Ellie Portman. And did they? Do you think they invited them to be Ellie Portman? And I don't. Uh, oh, probably Fox. not. Yeah. Um, oh, like the scene where yeah. they're just like, well, they're away right now. <laughs> Well, I, I think it was because they, they we noticed don't care that, enough to show them to. Well, no, I, I noticed that they, they got a bunch of supporting people from each of the movies, but just not any of like the like stand out like 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 oh well here's you know Don Cheadle we'll mention Pepper Potts but we're not gonna bother paying Gwyneth Paltrow to show up for like one scene. <laughs> Same well, like and, Natalie Portman, but then like Stellan Skarsgård yeah. shows up, which I don't know why. Well, to help Thor, like he knows all yeah. the mythology stuff. Well, and uh, most of that scene with the Thor going to the one scene in the movie, I was like, this was wild. The one scene that was wildly unnecessary. Yeah, because like, why did he need him to show him in the pool? Well, what? apparently that scene was much, much longer in uh, Whedon's original. Oh, well, and, and I have to agree with you on that. I was thinking that when that scene was going on, I was well, like, this does. I don't think this really needs to be here. But well, I, I five felt, minutes later, I'd I already forgotten that, about the scene. Yeah. I felt that it was okay because, yeah, I mean, he. Skarsgård already showed in like the first Thor movie that like he's he knows like a lot of the mythology stuff and like all about that stuff. Yeah. And has a good understanding of how like the the practical physics of it work between like you know their world and ours. Mm -hmm. And then the fact that he was under the influence and in designing all this stuff, working with that stone that was in yeah. Loki's staff in the the Avengers. I mean, it kind of puts him in a in an area where like you know like he's had exposure to. The, all that as well, to where he would have like a good idea to help. Yeah, and Marvel. The Marvel Studios is also notoriously tight financially, and the other thing is probably they don't want to blow. Uh, you know, all these actors are on contracts for a limited number of movies mm -hmm. that they have to do, so they probably don't want to blow a contract. A, a movie that they could be in by putting them as a cameo. Oh yeah, because I think because uh, I think like they lost. They lost one of their goes with Robert Downey Jr. for like the three minute long like post credit sequence in uh, yeah. Hulk. Yeah, hmm. yeah. That was one of them. That was one of his contracts right there. Yeah. And so they don't want to lose those opportunities, and also, uh, I think Natalie Portman has said that you know there are movies that she doesn't have a problem with doing, but they're not something she looks forward to. Oh. Mm -hmm. So, like, not that she's had a bad experience, just eh. Sure. You know. Um, but and, and also said the same thing. <laughs> it, yeah, and also I mean, what kind of role could they have played in this? You know, realistically, other than just that more people. In, yeah. yeah, they would just been like, hey, here's everybody from everything. Yeah, because in one room, cause, like, Rhodey had a payoff. Like the Falcon had a payoff. Kinda. But they weren't. But it, also at the same time, like I was saying earlier, at least they don't. Just disregard the the existence of those characters. They were mentioned. They were given a plausible excuse for not being around during those events. And I also think that uh, yeah, Whedon yeah, was it, really trying to focus more on the characters that don't have their own movie series. Is yeah, I, I thought it was nice because yeah, it works into their why it's not like like hey, they decided to have this big party and not invite any of their girlfriends. The party was one of my favorite scenes in the movie. Mm -hmm. But I, I like taking that turns it, trying to lift the hammer. <laughs> but I like that it gave a lot of uh, a lot of decent like face time to like. Like yeah, like some of the characters who are gonna be you know coming up in more stuff like yeah. like Anthony Mackie and Don Cheadle you know kind of like taking over in replace of you know some of the characters who are, you know their contracts are almost up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because <clears throat> I'm really curious that like after Phase Three if they're just gonna stop for a while. Might almost have to. I mean, I know they got stuff planned all the way up to, like, the day I die. But, yeah, I mean... <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, man, I can't wait to see this movie but, when I'm 40. <laughs> but Downey's not going to want to do these things forever, and quite frankly, they're not going to be able to afford him after a while. Chris Evans has said quite fr flatly after his contract's up, he's mm -hmm. he might not act for a mm -hmm. while. Um and a lot of the, and they're going to get mean, older and stuff. I mean, yeah, I mean, there, there's a reason why he, he yeah. takes off at the end of this... And the next Thor movie is Ragnarok, yeah. where all of the gods die. Yeah. And you got, I mean, because, yeah, most of these, like, Downey started doing this, what, seven, eight years ago? Like, Something like that. And then he's going to be in Captain America next year. 
and then probably at least cameo in the first Infinity War and be a star in the second. Like mm-hmm. that's a long time to be working on one project. That's yeah. a that's a huge franchise for mm-hmm. one actor to, and he really is the linchpin of it. So I mean. Yeah. How many of these movies do they have planned at this point? At this point, there are... I think uh, they have ones going all the way to, like, 2028. No, no, not that far, I don't think. Uh, 18, I think. Something fucking crazy. Uh, 2018, because, yeah, uh, Ant-Man is the last movie in Phase 2, and I think there are 11 movies in Phase 3. Ah. Uh-huh. Because um, there's, there's going to be... Uh, Captain America Civil War, Thor Ragnarok, Guardians of the Galaxy 2, uh-huh. Doctor Strange, uh, then they're doing Infinity War 1, then they're doing Black Panther, then Captain Marvel, then Infinity War 2, and then Inhumans. And then by Beast. <laughs> yes. yes. And then the by Beast. <laughs> so, yeah. his sidekick Lady Stilt, man. Yeah. yeah I, think, I think starting next year we get two or three Marvel movies a mm-hmm. year till 2018. I can dig it. Yeah, I'm fine with that idea. Yeah, I am. I'm, <coughs> I love it, too. It keeps us going to see something decent and not uh, two for unfinished business. <laughs> <laughs> well, unless Marvel starts getting really lazy, which, quite frankly, they could probably get away with it with at this point, mm. you know? In 2019, Math Man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Matt Fraction. Write the comic. Because if he writes it himself, it'll be good. <laughs> Pair up this math man character along with uh, bring back a typeface. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> their, their opponent could be what, Dr. Bong? Is typeface uh, that thing from uh, Naked Lunch? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Although you would assume. <laughs> no, typeface was, was a... He, he was, was like a, a Spider-Man... He was a... Anti-hero kind of guy. Yeah, he was a Vietnam vet who came back all like was, damaged he, he and like, everything. He, he just he, had like... He, he bo- strap like letters to his body and use them as weapons. <laughs> I was picturing a like, typewriter for a head, but no, he was no, so much like, better. Like a big sharpened letter A and he would like throw it like a fucking throwing star. And like he would have like... L's and use them as like uh-huh. axes and shit. Typeface. Rated R. I, Just wearing like army fatigue pants, suspenders, and a bunch of letters all over his Yeah, body. no shirt. Mm-hmm. Just oh, and they were, they were multicolored. They look like fridge magnets, basically. <laughs> you know, the 70s were a hell of a time. <laughs> Sounds like the best time. Typeface Between is going on my list of favorites now. <laughs> Ghetto man. <laughs> Ghetto Man, oh, whatever, I'd rather watch Ghetto Man than the new fucking Superman movies. <laughs> Ghetto Man's the only character they don't have in that fucking movie. Yeah, that's the thing that keeps getting me, is like, every time I turn around, it's like, it's like, oh man, they just announced that they're gonna have another person in that movie, like, s- stop. <laughs> the title of the movie is Batman Superman. Stop. With those two. It's like... Oh, Wonder Woman's going to be a big part of it. Then put her name in there. Or rename it like Trinity or something. No, oh, man. Then Aquaman, too. And Aquaman, and Cyborg, and The Flash, and fucking anybody else they can think of. Well, DC, they're pushing too hard, is what they're doing. They'll probably have a subtle Deathstroke reference in well, there. The, the the Wonder Woman movie that's supposed to come out in two well, years, the that's scheduled and for 2017... <laughs> They have five different writers working on five different scripts for the Wonder Woman movie. Then what are they going to do? Throw them in the air and see what they can grab? It's supposed to come out in two years. Five different writers Uh, working on five different scripts. Sounds like they should have five different people working on filming it right now if it's supposed to come out in two years. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> I'm sorry if we're boring you. Uh, I'm just proud of my joke from a couple seconds ago. I'm taking, <laughs> I'm taking the lean back. <laughs> I would read the hell out of that. <laughs> what the fuck is even next week? Uh, I don't know. Hot it Pursuit, I think. Hot. Bruce Wednesday. <laughs> Bruce, Bruce. Is that when Bruce Wednesday comes out? Give me a second. I'll look it up. I'm pretty sure like it's that fucking Hot Pursuit movie, which I'm still not sure if it's based on the video game or not. Uh, next week, Hot Pursuit is the big thing, but Maggie comes out. Mm-hmm. If we get in town, Maggie. I'm really The movie it. that proves that uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger can actually act. I'm yeah. really looking forward to Maggie. I saw the trailer for that one the other day. I'm like, it's like, huh, 
So it's like The Last of Us. Yeah. If Ellie wasn't immune. <laughs> and then the week after that, we get a uh, Mad Max. Yeah, fuck yeah. And Pitch Perfect 2, which, yeah, right on. You get Pitch Slash. And then the week after that, we get Tomorrowland and Poltergeist. And then we get a, a Which, by the week, way, that, two that weeks. poster in there for Poltergeist is just abject terror. <laughs> <laughs> what does it look like? It's a clown. Axe. It's the clown puppet. Oh, the one that knows that pulled out? Yeah. Well, <clears throat> so I guess... I I don't know if Maggie's getting a wide release or not. I don't know if that's getting a wide release or if it's going to be an on-demand thing. I hope it gets a wide release. I really fucking want to see that. Yeah, it's hard to tell. It's one of those, like... It's anytime there's one where it's like, well, I hear it's been making the festival rounds. It's like and hit given, or fucking miss. And given yeah. the fact that we've gotten no trailers for that in front of any of the movies we've gone True. to see, Hot Pursuit, on the other hand, which one's Hot Pursuit? It's the one with uh, Reese, Reese Witherspoon, Witherspoon and, and Sophia. And, uh, oh, yeah. right. I saw a trailer for that the other day and thought, why? <laughs> if that's based on the fucking video game, then it's based on it in the same way Need for Speed is based on I hope it's based on the time she got pulled over and yelled at a cop. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if they'll work that in somehow. I don't know. I guess I'll find out if that's the only thing coming out this weekend. <laughs> Take Irving with you. Come on, Irving. We're going to see Hot Pursuit. He just pops up the side. Okay, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> uh he was down here the whole time. <laughs> I'm sure. Hold this over until Need for Speed 2 comes out. <laughs> Can't be soon enough. I'm gonna go home and play Broken Age 2. The second act came out. Yeah, so they finally got around to doing that. My name. I replayed the first half because I couldn't fucking remember what happened. <laughs> I'm gonna go home and crash. <laughs> <laughs> gonna go home and watch Crash. <laughs> <laughs> the Spider one, though. Both of them. Two TVs. Let's see if they Just keep going like this. Yeah. Oh yeah, that way I can see Spader and Don Cheadle. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be just like I'm watching the Avengers again. <laughs> just like it. There'll be so many goddamn characters I won't know the difference. <laughs> that each one of those is a cast of thousands. <laughs> this just sounds like a solid idea. <laughs> Don. We could make this happen. Yes. <laughs> Bye, guys. See ya.